Welcome back to Red Dirt Designs, part two of how to paint a mailbox start to finish. Alright, for our base coat, I'm going to go with this Tangela Pearl base coat by House of Color. On the instructions it says mix it 2 to 1. And with our mixing cup, we know that you use the ratios the same as um, the primer. Um, we'll use two parts this to one part reducer. I gave this a good shake. I don't know if you can see that color, but it's, it's pretty. Alright. Kind of just guesstimating on how much I'm going to need. I left it just a little shy because I wanted this to be a little thicker. This stuff tends to be a little too transparent for my liking, so I go a little thicker. Kind of just see the way it drips off of there. You can kind of see the viscosity of it by just checking the drips off your uh, stirring stick. It's a good idea to get in the habit of doing that. That way you can kind of tell in case you've already had a paint that's been reduced or something and it's been poured back in the container. That happens a lot in my shop here. So uh, a lot of times I go off of just how it drips off the stir stick to see if it's thick or thin. Enough for the paint gun. So, All right, now we're ready to go and spray this on there. I'm going to go ahead and prep and clean that surface one more time right before I spray so I know there's going to be no contaminants on the surface. Okay, now I'm going to do the same process as I did before. This time I'm wearing gloves because this is going to be the final uh, step here. And we want to make sure that we don't have anything. This uh, base coat is extremely expensive. It's like $158 a quart. So I try to make sure I don't do anything on my part to cause any issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean and prep this surface one more time. And this time, from now on, I'll be wearing gloves to protect the surface from getting any oils from my hands. Okay, just like before, we're going to strain our paint. Okay. I'm going to spray two to three coats. Okay, this is coat number two. So, just gonna prop this open a little ways, and I'm gonna dust this with some uh, orange paint. see that helps a lot and because I'm only putting a little dusting on there it should help with the fact that the door won't get hung up because if you build this up too much these doors they don't like to shut so I prefer leaving it like that where it's just hazy in there so it, it'll still shut I've built this up and cleared it you don't necessarily want to do that that door will literally have trouble shutting you could probably tweak it and modify it to make it work but I think it's best to do it this way, so that's why I also didn't build up all my primer in there either. Because by the time you get your primer, your base coat, your clear coat, if you were to make it solid like that all the way across, the mill, the thickness of that wouldn't allow this door to shut and that would become a problem. So from time of doing it, trial and error, I've learned that it's best to do it this way. I'm going to keep this mailbox pretty simple, but I'm going to print off this 
Harley Davidson logo. I'm going to use the Cricut Design Space and use my Cricut Vinyl Cutter to cut out my images to save time. I have a smaller Harley Davidson logo here at the bottom. I'm just doing a test coat with it to see if I can go that small with this new vinyl I'm trying out. It may not cut because it's very small and it's probably going to mess up, but I figured I'd give it a shot. I'm using Vivid for my airbrushing vinyl. I'll leave a link in the description, but you want to set your Cricut to light cardstock. That's the better cut setting for a Cricut. I have a video more in depth with how to use a Cricut vinyl cutter. I'll put that on the end screen. I also have one that gives a review on this vinyl that I'm using for this tutorial. All right, now that we have our vinyls cut out, we're gonna place these in the center of the mailbox. We gotta separate the vinyl from the backing, and then we'll just line it up, and I'll bring you guys back on. Once you got it kind of set down where you think it's correct, make sure you measure and get it really close. That's pretty darn good. You want to try to pull this at a really, really strong angle. Try to keep it from pulling away. If you, if you lift straight out, it would just rip that vinyl right off. So I try to go against it like really, really close. I pretty much am pulling straight back. On this side, we're gonna have the flag. So because the flag's on this side, notice that it goes almost all the way to there so it'll cover it up a lot of the artwork. So I might actually move this graphic back just so it'll, I'll go back as far as I can, and that way the most amount of it will be exposed whenever the flag's down. All right, I mixed up some black in my airbrush. Now I'm just gonna try to go over this stencil material to where when I peel it back, it'll leave the image. So just to start out, I'm just gonna kinda go over some of this and just add a little bit of shading. I don't wanna get carried away with it because I wanna add a lot of textures and stuff in here but I, I mainly want to just get an outline of everything. Now to bring in some textures, because I don't want it to just be a plain Jane mailbox. So we're gonna add the custom effect here by putting some grunge, just a few little pieces of this texture here. Don't wanna get too carried away with it, but I definitely want some of this in there. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, there we go. my favorite things to do with texturing is the carpet cleaner. I have tutorials on that out, probably a couple of them actually. So uh, I'll put a link to that or a card right here. Let's go ahead and try to kind of come up with a design kind of with the foam. I like the bigger Splotches. And now, with that all on there, all fun and wild like, we're just going to dust over all of it. This will kind of tone, tone back that 
orange just a little bit, but I'm trying to stay off this top a little bit. I want to kind of keep the orange true up here. So I'm, I'm going to go up close to it, but I don't want to go all the way up. Now I'm going to kind of let that dry for a minute here. And then we're just going to wipe it off with the clean paper towel. Yeah. See, I didn't go crazy with it. If I'd have gone too heavy with it, it would have been way too grungy. I like the way that looks. It did a very nice job. I want you to see what it does. That's what that grunge effect does. Now I'm going to carefully start peeling back some of this. I decided to frame this mailbox out with black to give it a little bit more depth around the edges. All right, now we're gonna do the front. We wanna blend everything to where it looks like it's all meant to be. So I'm just gonna turn this and do it the opposite of the, of the back. So we're gonna use the same texture techniques. All right, now it's time to do the other side. We want to kind of do like we did on the other side. Start out by just hazing over it all. Okay, now I gotta haze over the whole thing. And darker underneath all the letters. how it's similar. Okay, something that I noticed was on this A, the center had fallen out and I didn't catch it. So now it's just solid black. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly freehand scratch this out with an X-Acto. Underneath there is that orange. That way we have our A. That's another way of doing it, or you could just mask it off and get your airbrush out and put that color in, but this works just fine. Okay, now you'll be ready for your clear coat. So what I'm gonna be using is this finished one. Um, this is just some old clear coat that I had laying around, so I figured it'd be good enough for a mailbox. The mixing ratio on this is four to one. So four parts of the clear coat, to one of the activator or also called a hardener. So I'll go ahead and mix that up and I'll stir it up and we'll strain it and then I'll bring you guys back on to show you the two coats of clear coat, possibly three depending on how well it lays out. If it lays out smooth I can get away with two. If it kind of rough and I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding, wet sanding, 
um, I'll go ahead and do three. But a lot of times on mailboxes, if I keep it clean and I tack it off, we can get away with just doing two. All right, we're gonna put about two coats of clear on this, three if it doesn't look too good. And we're gonna wanna wear a respirator for this. This stuff's very toxic. This first coat laid out pretty darn good. Pretty happy with it, don't see any major issues. So we're gonna put one more on there. I'm gonna try to lay this one on here pretty wet and try to get it to where there's less orange peel. So on your second coat, you can go a little heavier. I'm waiting until it was tacky to the touch. You don't want it to be wet because then it'll cause it to run. So you want it to be tacky so that way it's kind of got some, you know, it'll kind of hold. And you don't want to wait too long for it to be too set up because then when you have a tacky clear coat, the next layer of clear coat will bond to that better and you won't have any issues with peeling paint or anything later on so I'm gonna go ahead and put my second coat on notice how them textures from that grunge spray gives it a little bit more character This will separate the mailbox from all the other mailboxes in your neighborhood. <laughs> 